Welcome to the very first episode of Best Evidence. My name is John Titus. In a few minutes, I'll talk about this channel and where it's headed. But first, I want to show you a short animated film that I just made. It takes the most recent batch of U.S. job data and puts it into historical perspective, which is something that the media never seems to do. I think after you see this film, you'll have a better understanding of why that is the case. According to mainstream economists, the downturn of 2008 ended quickly with a recovery that started in June of 2009. This recovery buzzword, however, which the media has pushed relentlessly for over five years, fails to describe what's happened to U.S. jobs. The labor force participation rate, for example, has not only dropped since 2008, but has done so for six straight years, smashing all records. Unlike many other economic indicators, the participation rate is easy to grasp and hard to manipulate. It's a simple percentage of working-age people who are working or looking for work. It's a far more accurate measure of joblessness than the unemployment rate, which ignores the vast majority of people in their working-age years who aren't working. Over the last 60 years, the U.S. labor force has undergone three distinct phases. The third and current phase is horrifying, as we shall see, the meltdown of 2008 never ended because the powers behind the bailouts that characterize this era have been actively destroying jobs all along. After sputtering around in the 1950s, the labor force participation rate stabilized in December of 1962, albeit at an all-time low for that decade. The labor force included 71 million people back then, out of a working-age population that totaled 121 million, so the participation rate was 58.4%. The rate then increased for an astounding 37 years, topping out at 67.3% in February of 2000. This ended the first and by far the longest and best era for American workers, spurred on by a manufacturing boom that drew women into workplaces by the tens of millions. The labor force more than doubled in size, adding 72 million people out of a working age population that grew by just 90 million. In other words, for every 100 people added to the working age population, 80 entered the labor force. These four decades were, without question, the golden age of the American middle class. In 2000, though, the fruits of so-called free trade showed up in the participation rate. As American factories were shuttered and U.S. jobs outsourced, labor force participation started to drop, at first slowly. The 12.5 million people added to the labor force accounted for little more than half the growth in working age population. This second phase ended when the full force of the financial crisis hit in October of 2008. This began the third phase, which has sent labor force participation over a cliff. Only 2.3 million people have entered the labor force out of a working age population that's grown by 15 million. In short, job creation in America is screeching to a halt. This disaster has been caused by bailouts. During the manufacturing boom, the labor force entry rate, which for any given period is that percentage of people added to the working age population who enter the labor force, was about 80%, as we saw. In the era of so-called free trade, that number dropped to 54%. Today, the labor force entry rate is completely unsustainable at 15%. Out of 100 people who come of working age now, in other words, 85 aren't finding work and aren't looking for work. What's behind this catastrophe is immediately apparent from the U.S. monetary base. Before the meltdown, the monetary base was only a hairline bigger than the total amount of cash in circulation. They both grew at roughly the same rate as the general population. They diverged radically, though, when the bailout started in October of 2008 which is exactly when jobs started vanishing by the millions. While cash and circulation has maintained its slow pace, the U.S. monetary base has exploded, quadrupling from $1 trillion to $4 trillion. This is the doing of the Federal Reserve, which in six short years has printed three times as much money as there is total cash and circulation. The Fed has siphoned this new money to a handful of megabanks that were all flat broke in 2008. The result is a crony economy where innovators and small business, the real engine of economic growth, are unable to take the risks of expansion or new ventures. By shielding the precious few from their own failures, the Federal Reserve has guaranteed the failure of everyone else. 
the colossal destruction of jobs caused by crony money printing, is clear simply by turning the labor force participation curve upside down. The inverse correlation at work here is tighter than a glove. For each box of printed money that's put into failed hands, the jobs market dries up a little more. These two charts might as well be identical. This isn't some cosmic accident. It's happening because the Federal Reserve exists for the sole purpose of enriching big banks, and they all went broke a long time ago. The Fed does whatever it takes to keep a yacht full of failed executives and their friends unimaginably rich. If this requires an economy of 300 million people to be blowtorched, then a blowtorching is what that economy will get. This is exactly what has occurred over the last six years. The Federal Reserve's only real job is to sell this mass murder to its victims. It does this by pumping legions of meat puppets in the media and elsewhere full of propaganda. How much longer the real economy can survive, though, when 85 people with no hope of finding work are being pumped out for every 15 job holders is a different question, one that the Federal Reserve doesn't give a damn about. Well, there it is in a nutshell. The whole country is being destroyed to prop up a handful of banks. I should point out that many, if not most of those banks, are foreign, and I'll get to the significance of that down the road. That brings me, though, to the purpose of this channel and its format. The goal here is simple, and that's to document what is happening to the U.S. with clear and convincing evidence. By clear, I mean with pictures that move through topics in a way that's easy to follow and understand. By convincing, I mean with documents and data that are as close to the original source as is possible. For example, in the film you just saw, all of those numbers, except for the bailout numbers, the bonuses, all of those numbers come from spreadsheets that I downloaded from the St. Louis Federal Reserve website called FRED. It contains an enormous trove of official data. The film itself is really no more than a container for those numbers. So, very simple goal here, paint clear pictures very accurately from source data and source information. As for format, the model for best evidence is really a magazine, not so much a newspaper. The point of view and the time span cover will be a little bit longer and the coverage a bit more in depth than is permitted by the daily news cycle. Magazines, though, include something called sidebars. And I'm going to really do the same thing here to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to include things like interviews from other sources, congressional testimony, and whatnot. But I'm only going to include those materials after I've done whatever editing I need to do to trim those materials down to size so that the videos are short and to the point. That's really about it, except for housekeeping. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and most importantly, please subscribe. I'm going to do my level best to produce videos that I think are worthy of your time. Other than that, I have just joined LinkedIn. My bio is there if you're interested. If you're on LinkedIn, I need contacts. So hit me up. I'd greatly appreciate it. My name again is John Titus. That is spelled T-I-T-U-S. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.